What is up everybody and welcome to a brand new video where you receive the most interesting news from inside of Russia from a Russian citizen himself. So don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Military personnel staged a mass escape with a huge riot from a military unit in Novosibirsk. Two of the escapees actually had criminal convictions. As you guys know, the Russian government has made it possible for any convicts for any crime that they have done to go and serve for the Russian military to get a pardon from the president. 10 to 15 soldiers have escaped after causing a huge riot inside, destroying the whole military base and just, I'm guessing, having a bit of fun. This is actually one of the largest escapes of soldiers from a military base since the beginning of the war. Here's a little details about the situation. The head of the village of Kocheneva, where the military unit was located, was the first to report the escape. According to him, the escape was committed by 10 soldiers who had previously left their units without permission. They left the village by taxi the official specified. Later, four of the escapees were detained outside the Kochenovsky district. By the evening, three more have been detained. There may have been more escapees. The sister of one of the escapees named in the media told that 15 people escaped. She is told this by her brother, who was probably mistakenly counted among the escapees. So, a lot of Russian soldiers right now realize that there's no point of fighting because they're going to die. And what is the point of all of this war, even if they are convicts? So they decide to somehow get away from all of this and get away by running away and causing a mass riot inside of the military base. They realize that there's only one way if you go and fight, which is to die. And nobody really wants to die. I think we will be seeing more of this from our trusted sources because this really shows how Russia and the Russian military is becoming weaker and weaker. You would not have a situation like this if the Russian soldiers were given the right equipment, the right rifles, were fed right, they would not escape. This only shows us the reality of the military inside of Russia. Now, a little story which I actually found quite humorous, but at the same time, quite sad. An FSB agent posing as a Ukrainian gave assignments to a resident of Russia. He received four years in prison for, I quote, cooperating with representatives of Ukraine. According to the first department, which examined the verdict of July 15th, oral resident Ivan Tolpigin was sentenced to four years in general regime penal colony and fined of 500,000 rubles, which is $5,000, for establishing and maintaining relations with a representative of Ukraine. It follows from the verdict that after the start of mobilization, the man began looking for ways to get to Ukraine and turn to Ukrainian resources, such as I want to live. Tulpigin was also accused of communicating with certain Ukrainian agent, I quote Timur, from who he received assignments. In reality, there was no representative of Ukraine. The pseudonym Timur was an agent acting on instructions from the FSB as a part of an operational experiment. Timur communicated with Tolpigin and gave him assignments. He convinced him to send him the coordinates of military facilities and to transmit information that contains information that creates conditions for causing damage to the security of the Russian Federation. Could you imagine this? This guy was fooled that he was talking to a Ukrainian, but was actually an FSB agent, and that FSB agent actually gave him assignments which are illegal. So basically, the FSB agent was breaking the law by giving him those assignments. So 
basically there has been absolutely no criminal activity going on. They just kind of set all of this up. Lawyer from the guy who got sentenced stated that the FSB in this case was not engaged in operational search activities, but inciting Tolpigan to commit a crime. Tolpigan himself told Timur what tasks he was carrying out, thanks to which FSB officers were able to film him. Can you imagine this, guys? They even filmed the guy doing all of this stuff because this FSB guy pretended to be someone from Ukraine and giving him all sorts of different activities for him to do that could have done something bad for Russia. But that doesn't make sense. FSB should have been in, in, in a normal country, right? FSB is the special services. So special services are supposed to be looking at the interactions of him, this guy, right, Tolpigin, with an actual Ukrainian soldier, Ukrainian intelligence, or something like that. Then that would make sense. But right now, it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, and it just looks like a huge setup to put this guy in prison and to show the Russian citizens that if they cooperate with somebody else, they're going to be having a hard time in prison. Another story which I found really interesting, this is not about war or anything like this, but this is what I call the reality of the mega power, the most democratic country in the world, with the normal family values as they call them, with the best infrastructure ever. But the residents of a city called Chelabinsk complain about problems with water. At first, there was no problems at all because there was no water at all whatsoever for quite a long time. And then the water turned black. As we guys see in those photos and videos, this is crazy. The water is literally like, I don't even know what color this is. This is black water coming out, brownish, looks disgusting. But we got a, a woman from uh, Chelabinsk. Her name is Ksenia, a resident of the city of Azursk, told that black water has been flowing from the tap for several months. Can you imagine this, guys? Several months you were having this type of stuff happening. It smells bad and has an oily structure. Locals also complain that it is impossible to take a shower or clean the bathtub. Obviously, how are you going to clean the bathtub if you have crappy water coming out? And how are you going to have a shower with a crappy water and you can't really clean anything with crappy water but the locals still joke around they're not losing their humor about the situation and there's one of the quotes i wanted to quote everything is fine i add sugar to the microwave but i haven't bought tea leaves for a week jokes users on social networks basically they're joking around that the color of the water is like tea or coffee so they just put some sugar in it microwave it you got yourself a very nice warm Russian beverage. The organization of all of this, right, who's responsible for the water supply, tells the residents that the quality meets the standards. Yes, guys, this is the standards of water. Very good drinking water, purified water. Wash yourself, brush your teeth with that stuff if you want to have a bit of explosive diarrhea. But since the end of October, they have been collecting water comparing samples and talking about eliminating the problems the city administration states that the repair work is being carried out to correct the situations but the locals still complain that nothing is changing why are the locals complaining i mean like come on guys you were the ones who chose this government most of those people probably voted for the government and you know what you get what you pay for, right? And this is not even the worst part of all of this. I want to mix up a few things around in this video. You know, we also got some news that herring under a four, which is a Russian national dish. I know there's probably going to be comments about this being a dish from another country or whatnot. I think everybody probably has the same dish, but with a bit of variations. Matter of fact, it will become more expensive for Russians to make. The price of a portion has increased by 12%, but 
But that's not even that bad because Russia wrote off $20 billion in debt to African countries. Meanwhile, the Russian citizens are drinking and showering in crappy, poopy water, it seems like. But that's not even that bad because you guys see this image right here. This is a building in Salihard. Officials propped up a house that was declared unsafe three years ago with wooden beams. They call this supportive measures. Can you imagine this? You literally are living in a house that's about to fall down and you complain to the government that, look at this, the house is unsafe to live. Move us to another place. You know, you're for giving $20 billion to an African country. But no, because Putin before, in a very long time ago, actually demanded to pull people out of the slums many times already. It seems like the officials are just not listening to him, right? Because people are still living in buildings that look like somewhat of a barrack about to fall down and uh, injure many people. And to the last news of today's video, the most loved around the world diplomat. Yes, guys, Lavrov. Okay, I'm joking. Anyways, he complained about Western sanctions, funnily enough, because it made him more difficult to refuel the aircraft of the Special Flight Squadron Russia around the world. Let's check out this little video right here. Johannesburg. There was a whole story about uh, refueling the plane for the return flight. Turns out that almost all the companies that refuel the planes do not uh, belong to the country. There was a similar story in Brazil. We couldn't fill it up because I was there. This is, uh, of course, annoying when the Americans introduce such sanctions. They do not understand uh, that, yes, they will be forced to fear these sanctions for some period to avoid the so-called secondary punishments. But for normal people, of course, resentment for their country, for their sovereignty, inevitably forms and strengthens. Can you imagine this, guys? So he is literally complaining about the fact that the oil companies and their fueling companies are owned by different countries that have imposed sanctions on Russia. And he understands that it is made to show Russia that they're in the wrong and that they should not be killing people and trying to take another country's land. But at the same time, he's just, why, why are you not fueling up my aircraft? Come on, seriously? First of all, I would have kind of thought that they would be bringing their own fuel in and stuff like that. And they're probably thinking, oh yeah, South Africa and Brazil, you know, uh, we're in the bricks. There's no problem. Just fill her up and let us fly. But no. And the sanctions are just going to get even worse. And the sanctions were made to feel bad for the government officials. So... It's going to be a bit harder for them to fly around the world, but I'm pretty sure they found aircraft fuel in those countries somehow because they were able to come back to Russia. What do you guys think about all of this? I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comment section below because I actually read every single comment. If you would like to support my channel, you could also hit the subscribe button and the like button and check out my coffee page in the links in the description and if you love car content i actually have a second channel called sanction drive and i hope by the end of the week we're going to be having an awesome video about a v8 swap in a very old japanese car stay safe and i'll see you guys next time